All right, so today I've got another age 55 board. This one is from ASUS. And the first thing that you can tell about it is that design matters. This is a replacement logo for the one that they have on their, uh, whatever it is, extreme something or other that includes USB 3.0, whatever. It's a similar looking logo and basically what they're saying is that engineering is important, which it is for motherboards because if it's not engineered well, it won't work very well. Okay, so this board also includes HDMI, DVI, GPU boost, DDR3-2133 support, that's pretty cool for like a, a micro ATX entry level board, and Turbo V. It is Windows 7 ready, it supports LGA 1156 socket CPUs, and that includes Core i7, Core i5, and Core i3. So there we go, that pretty much covers that here. They've got a quick... Oh, oh, actually, this is kind of neat. Okay, so instant iGPU level boot level up. So they take the integrated GPU in real time and boost it for the best graphics performance. So if you actually care about the graphics performance of your onboard CPU on the Core i3 or Core i5 dual core, then this is how you will be able to take advantage of it. It also has a turbo key, which allows for easy, it's an overclocking button, okay? All right, okay, well, why don't we get this thing open and then we'll have a have a quick look at it. So this is a pro board, so it's not one of their most basic, uh-oh, I'm losing accessories here. You know what, give me just like two seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my camera down so you can see what I'm doing here. You know what, I might even use the zoom today, check that out, so you'll be able to see even better. Wow, how about that? Okay, then I have accessories. So inside we will find two SATA cables, one straight and one right angle. Then we will find one IDE cable, now, seriously, Personally, I would rather see another couple SATA cables because how many people are really using IDE drives with the new build these days? All right, then we got an IO shield. Then we have a user's guide, which also includes a DVD that has all your drivers and whatnot. Don't use any of this. Download the latest off ASUS.com and you will be able to have a much better experience out of the box with the latest drivers. All right, and then we have the board itself in ASUS's eco-friendly all paper packaging. There's no foam, there's very little plastic actually, so I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, wrong way, wrong way. It's hard to operate a camera from like the front of it. It's uh, not ideal. All right, so I don't see any mention whatsoever on this board for Crossfire support, to be perfectly honest, but I haven't actually checked to see if it does support it, so hopefully I'll figure it out at some point and make an annotation, but let's have a look at the general layout of the board. So first of all, you've got two PCI slots, one PCI Express 16 slot, and one PCIe 1 slot. This is kind of my ideal configuration for a micro ATX board these days, because really if you're gonna be using a single slot GPU, even if, yeah, even if you're using a single slot GPU, you're gonna wanna leave the next slot open so it has some room to breathe. So this way you can use a PCI Express and a PCI, and then you can also use a video card in it if you want. You've got a few USB 3. Point, uh, excuse me, U three USB 2.0 headers. All right, then you've got six SATA ports, which is, I, I love that. I love how so, how so many lower end boards these days are coming with more SATA ports. You can also see that even though this looks like kind of a random layout for them, it's not random at all because here's your PCI Express graphics slot and here is the space that would be taken up by a dual slot GPU. So they've got it positioned so you can conveniently make use of these even if you have a long graphics card installed. You got an IDE port on the side here and then you have your 24 pin power located in its ideal location along the right hand edge. They've got their, uh, wow, I can't believe they didn't call this out on the box because I've seen it on every other box that has this. They have their um, easy one-sided RAM Instantly, I don't know, I don't remember what this is called, but basically there's only a clip on the one side. The other side, this side doesn't actually have clips, so you see they're they're shaped kind of different. So all you have to do is you you put the the RAM module in this one, and then you open up the clip, put it in, and then clip it in on the one side. So it's kind of different that way. All right. Uh, then you've got your LGA 1156 socket, which supports Core i3s, Core i5s, and Core i7s. Now, this is an H55 board, so that means you've got onboard video, including HDMI, DVI, and VGA. But the bad news is that the onboard video is not on the motherboard. It's not actually in the chipset, it's in the CPU. So if you put in a CPU that doesn't have onboard video, then it won't work. So you have to use a Core i3 dual core or a Core i5 dual core in order to take advantage of the onboard video, just something you ought to be aware of. All right, so then we've got an 8-pin power connector, which is quite surprising to see on, like, well, like I said, sort of a, 
it's kind of a hybrid, like it's either value or it's high end, it's kind of both. Okay, they've got their cool Fortress of Solitude style of uh, MOSFET cooling here. I really like this. I can't even I can't even explain why. And then on the back panel, let's have a quick look here. I mean, I know I kind of showed it to you, but let's have a better look. So you got a PS2 port. Looks like it's keyboard only, but eh, it might work with a mouse. I have no idea. Normally those ones are color coded green and purple. Then you've got six USB ports. These are all USB 2.0. You've got HDMI. Like I said, won't work without the onboard GPU. Then you've got optical audio out. You've got a couple more GPU outputs. Again, they don't work without an onboard GPU. You've got gigabit ethernet and 7.1 audio. So thank you for checking out my quick unboxing of the ASUS P7H55-M Pro.